The Bible mentioned mysterious stories about demons, one of them is Naamah. You will be surprised to find out that she also appears in the famous Judgment of Solomon. Most of the stories about her character have been discovered and explained by Bible scholars. Naamah is the deserving winner of the esteemed title, Mother of All Demons. She is also known as the Mother of Ashmedai, the Mighty King of Demons. Unlike Lilith, who is older than her, little has been written about Naamah. Her name appears for the first time in Genesis, chapter 4. There, it tells the story of Naamah, the daughter of Lamech and Silla, and the sister of Tobal Cain. She is part of a dynasty that starts with the infamous Cain, who murdered his brother and continues with the character of Enoch. Genesis 4 verse 22 Zilla also had a son, Tovel Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tovel Cain's sister was Naamah. Due to the limited information available about her character, she becomes a mysterious figure, adding to the legends surrounding her name. According to commentators, Naamah is believed to be the wife of Noah, the builder of the ark. In the story of the flood, Noah's wife remains unnamed. But the commentaries suggested that Noah's wife is Naamah, the daughter of Lamech and Silla. Lamech had two wives, one named Ada and the other named Silla. Silla gave birth to a son and a daughter. As for Naamah, her marriage to Noah, the leader of that generation, was definitely meaningful. According to the interpretation, Naamah was given her name because of her pleasant nature, which is why she deserved to be saved from the flood due to her good deeds. Just like Noah, who was saved because of his righteousness, Naamah is also saved because her deeds are pleasing. Noah is a descendant of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, and Naamah came to be a worthy descendant of Cain, and was privileged to connect with the seed of Seth, which is the purpose of creation. After the flood, when Noah collapsed, she may have been the one who took the lead and continued where he left off, tirelessly building the new world. Let's go back to Naamah the evil. Some commentators claim that she was given a name because her deeds are pleasant, while others suggest that Naamah's beauty is what led to the intriguing passage mentioned in chapter 6 in the book of Genesis. The sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Genesis 6 verse 2 Indeed, Naamah is depicted as one of the daughters of humans who, according to biblical accounts, enticed angels to descend to earth and engage in forbidden relationships. This indicates that there were two distinct traditions covering Naamah's character. And this is where the opposition arises in the versions. Noah, an innocent and righteous man, cannot marry the one who became the mother of demons. In the book of Genesis, chapters 4 and 5, two distinct genealogies are presented, both featuring the names of Enoch and Lamech being repeated. Intervening the versions became challenging as the characters diverged. According to one version, Noah married another Naamah, the daughter of Enoch. This attribution seems more logical, considering the sanctification of Enoch's character over the years. Like Adam and Eve, she was said to be the only woman to live a long life during the flood generation. In other tales, Naamah is sometimes portrayed as the wife of a demon king named Shamdon, or even other demons. Her name is mentioned in several genealogy lists of demons. Among the four women who were the mothers of demons are Lilith, Naamah, Egret, and Sheath. It is said that each of them rules during one of the four periods of the year and gathers the mountains of darkness. Each one serves as a governor in its designated time, from sunset until midnight, along with all their camps. 
An intriguing detail is that commentators divided the year into four periods. Nehemiah and Lilith frequently appear together in the scriptures. Just like Lilith, Nehemiah's primary activity was seducing men in their dreams. Additionally, Lilith was her accomplice in suffocating babies. According to legend, Nehemiah's seat was said to be in the depths of the sea. From there, she would embark on her night journeys, delving into the thoughts of men. One commentator suggests that she originated from the lineage of Cain, from which demons and spirits were believed to have emerged. These two fields are often considered evil and frightening to such an extent that it has become customary to associate them with figures like Lilith and Naamah or in other versions, Lilith and Augeret in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3. There is a story about two harlots who appeared before King Solomon, seeking his judgment on their quarrel over a one baby. King Solomon served as a judge in a remarkable case involving two women who both claimed to be the mother of a baby. Through his brilliant exercise, he revealed their hidden and true feelings, which made it clear who was the real mother and who was the pretender. Solomon's devotion was rewarded as God appeared to him in a dream, granting him the opportunity to ask for anything he desired. With wisdom shining bright in his heart, Solomon chose a gift that would not only benefit himself but also serve the greater good. He asked for wisdom, knowing that it would guide him in leading his people with fairness and compassion. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? 1 Kings 3 verse 9 and answered by God. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. 1 Kings 3 verse 12. After that, Solomon ascended to Jerusalem where the trial of the two prostitutes was held. Now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone, there was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night this woman's son died because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I your servant was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, No. The living one is my son, the dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, No. The dead one is yours, the living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, This one says, My son is alive and your son is dead, while that one says, No. Your son is dead and mine is alive. 1 Kings 3 verses 16 to 23. Solomon was faced with a difficult case involving two prostitutes who lived together. Both of them had given birth to babies just three days apart, but unfortunately, one of the babies did not survive. The woman who was left with the dead baby claimed against her friend that she changed the babies during the night while she sleeps. Does this remind you of anything so far? Let's continue. The other woman denied the accusation, while both women claimed motherhood over the surviving baby. Solomon listened to their testimonies and carefully considered the situation. In his wisdom, he ordered a sword to be brought before him. However, instead of carrying out the harsh decision of cutting the baby in half, he devised a plan to reveal the true mother. 
When the real mother of the baby heard the shocking judgment, she made the difficult decision to give up and pass the baby over to her friend. However, she had one condition, that they would not harm the child. Meanwhile, the other person involved cried out in distress, expressing a desperate plea to avoid any harm. In response, Solomon proclaimed the rightful verdict and entrusted the baby to its true mother, the one who selflessly offered to give up the child to protect its life. This is where interpretation becomes significant. The two women were field spirits disguised as humans. In later generations, commentators identified these spirits as Lilith and Naamah. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.